welcome back to the Maker Jane channel, where I share all things English paper piecing, from tips and tutorials to projects and more. So if you love EPP like I do, please consider subscribing. I am super excited to be bringing this video to you. We continue on with the Flowers and Butterflies EPP skill building series. It's a six part series where six patterns will be released and each pattern will include a flower and a butterfly in three different sizes. And each pattern is designed in such a way that is going to kind of build upon the previous patterns, uh, skills and techniques that were used and will help you to actually build your English paper piecing skills. These videos are the stitch along part of our Flowers and Butterflies skill building series. And we're going to be covering all sorts of techniques in this series. So we're gonna be covering everything from the very basics of basting. We'll be working with different shapes. We'll get into fussy cutting and how to do fussy cutting. We're also gonna cover curves how to baste curves, as well as how to stitch curves. And at the end of the series, I'm gonna share with you a free project that you can use all of your flowers and butterflies that you've made all along during the sew along. This skill building series is great for both beginners as well as more advanced English paper piecers. Because we're gonna be covering so many different topics, you can hop in at any time. The links to the patterns and any notions or tools that I'm using in the videos are always down below in the description. So if you'd like to join in for pattern number two, go ahead and grab the pattern down at the link below and you'll be all set. So let's talk about this second pattern in the series. In this pattern, we're moving beyond hexagons and we're starting to work with shapes that are just a little bit sharper in their point. And there are some specific techniques and some specific ways that we need to start approaching shapes that are other than hexagons. So it's gonna be a great pattern for you to kind of get familiar with working with shapes other than hexagons. And it's a great pattern to start practicing lining up your seams and getting all your points together and closing up any gaps and all of that. So I've decided to break pattern number two up into three separate videos. In this video, we're going to cover the pattern. I'm going to talk you through it, give you some tips on how you can cut your templates if you decide to do so, and just kind of give you an overview of what the pattern looks like. In the second video, we are going to start assembling and putting together the flower design from pattern number two. And in the third video, we will put together the butterfly design from pattern number two. So if you're not already subscribed, remember to do so and be sure to click that bell so that you get notified on when those next videos are posted. The link to get pattern number two is down below in the description. So go ahead and click that link, get your pattern, print it out, and let's head over to the table and take a look at a few of those pattern pages so I can show you what you can expect from pattern number two of the Flowers and Butterflies skill building series. The Flowers and Butterflies pattern number two is a 20 page PDF download that you can download from the shop. There's just a few pages that I want to go over with you in this first video. The uh, first page I wanna talk about is page five of the pattern. And this shows the overall block dimensions. So basically the size that the blocks are going to be once everything's assembled. So basically it's the finished size. So you can see here, we've got small, medium, and large. And inside of each pattern are all three sizes, which I'll show you those template sheets here in just a second. So you've got small flower and butterfly, medium flower and butterfly, and a large flower and butterfly included in each pattern. So you have everything that you need within the pattern to make any of those three sizes. And I've actually got some uh, samples here so you can get an idea of what the small, uh, small looks like, what the medium looks like, and what the large looks like. Just to kind of give you an idea. So this is just a standard US letter size piece of paper. And 
these are the butterflies in relation to the paper. So I've got the measurements of the, the height or the, the tallness of the block and then the width. And those are again for each size and for each design. So let me show you really quickly what the finished flowers are gonna look like. So this is the small, this is the medium, and this <laughs> is the large. And this is quite a large flower, uh, which I think would look really great on a larger project, like a quilt or maybe even, you know, anything from a child's quilt all the way up to, you know, a queen or king size quilt. This would work really great. These smaller flowers are going to obviously work well for any project, but they will also work especially well for smaller projects. So if you want to add a flower motif to a bag, let's say, or maybe uh, a backpack or um, a pillow, um, a book, uh, book cover type of thing. There, the possibilities are endless. So that's why I wanted to include three different sizes of each, the flower and the butterflies so that you've got a lot of options on how you can use these in your future projects. And I'm going to be doing the same exact thing for all of the patterns in this skill building series. The block dimensions page is a page that you will be able to refer to uh, when you want to decide what size butterfly or flower you wanna make, okay? The other page that I wanna show you is the coloring page. And basically it's just a, a way for you to start playing around with color before you actually cut into your fabrics. And you can print off as many copies of this as you want, as long as you're using it for your own personal use. You can color in an endless variety of options and ideas and try out different colors and different color combinations before you actually cut into your fabric. Another thing I wanna point out that's really important with this coloring page is the one inch square. And I wanted to put it on the coloring page because the rest of the pattern itself has a lot of graphics and a lot of color to it. And I didn't want you to have to print all of that color just to get your one inch square. So before you print your templates, when I, which I'm gonna show you next, you're gonna need to print off this square, double checking your printer settings and the instructions are inside the pattern. So go ahead and refer to that. But this is where that one inch square is, and it's on page 13. So all you have to do is print this one sheet to figure out if your printer is set to the correct setting. So I'm going to grab a ruler real quick and show you what it should look like. So I've printed this off at 100% or no scaling. It depends on your printer and your printer settings. It may say no scaling or it may say scale 100%. Either one is what you want. You don't want it to scale to fit and you don't want it to be any other percentage other than 100% if it, if it doesn't give you the option to turn your scaling off. Like mine doesn't give me the option, so I have to choose 100% scaling. And that just means that it's, it's gonna print exactly at 100% of what it was designed for, okay? So once you have your coloring page printed, grab a ruler, you can use any quilting ruler or even just a regular school ruler, and you're gonna measure that square. And because it's a square and it's one inch, any of the sides are, they're all the same length. So you can measure any of the sides and you wanna make sure that it's one inch, that it matches up on the with the one inch mark on your ruler. Once you've done that and you've, you know, made sure that your printer settings, you know what your printer settings were, then when you get ready to print your templates, just make sure that the printer settings are the same as what got you this one inch square. And that's it. And just, you know, before you print any of the template sheets, just double check your printer settings, visually take a look at it 
and then hit print and you should be good to go. So I just want to give you a quick look at what the template sheets look like. I've got the templates divided up onto separate pages based on their size. So all of the small butterfly templates are on their own page. And right here at the very top, I also mentioned how many butterflies you can get from one sheet of templates. So that'll give you an idea how many sheets you may need to print if you need more than four butterflies you're going to need to print more than a single sheet for the small butterfly okay and all of the template sheets are the same uh, in that way so we've got our medium butterfly templates and a single sheet of medium butterfly templates will make three butterflies and then we have our large which they're large pieces so they will only fit one butterfly's worth of templates on one sheet. So if you need more than one large butterfly, you'll need to print more sheets. And I do recommend, I mentioned it in the pattern and I will mention it here just to give you a little reminder, uh, especially for this pattern, both the flower and the butterfly, uh, especially the flower, but for flowers and butterflies number two, I highly recommend that you print your templates on cardstock. Reason for that is because we're working with, we're going to be working with sharper points than we've worked with in the past here on the channel. Pattern number one of the flowers and butterflies was all hexagons. So, and you can see here, the hexagons don't really have any pointy shapes. They're all the same angle and they're, they're not real pointy. But when we start getting into the flower of this particular pattern, number two, we are going to start working with some more pointier shapes. And having cardstock as your template is going to help you keep your points nice and sharp. It's also going to help you and make it easier for you to baste your shapes. So you can print your templates on cardstock and then cut them out just like you normally would any template. You can either use scissors or you can use a rotary cutter and mat and a rotary ruler. It's up to you. If you prefer to, to buy pre-cut templates, I have those available in my shop. Either way is totally fine. It's up to you, however you want to do it. So the flower comes in three separate pages as well, based on size. So for the small flower, you can get uh, two flowers for each sheet of templates. The medium flower sheet will make one. And all of the templates are on a single sheet. So this whole sheet will make one flower. And then for the large flower, uh, again, one sheet will make one flower. So if you decide you want to make your own templates using these template uh, sheets, remember, just like with the butterflies, if you need more than one large flower, you're going to want to print more than one of these sheets. If you'd like to join me and stitch along with pattern number two in the Flowers and Butterfly series, get the pattern down below at the link from my shop. Take a look at the pattern, figure out what size flower and butterfly you want to make. Print out the template sheets that correspond to that size and cut your templates out so that you'll be ready for the video coming out next week in which we'll start to put together the flower from this pattern. If you would prefer to buy pre-cut paper templates, those are also available in my shop and I will link to that down below. If you're not yet subscribed, be sure to do so and click that bell so that you get notified when these next videos are published on the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll join me in pattern number two of the Flowers and Butterflies skill building series. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, keep on stitching.